we had talked a lot about digital india and it's a great thing that india is becoming digital but what about digital divide do you know this thing that we had a great digital divide between male and female urban and rural upper caste and lower caste yes digital divide exists throughout the era Hello and welcome to the in new series of Drishti IAS. I am Ritu and today's session is about Starlink project and why there are so much delay in implementation of the Starlink project. So we are going to talk about this project. What are the concerns associated with it? So we'll talk about it. So let's move towards to the news part. So the news is that the vast rural expanses of India are often overshadowed and as you already know that we keep talking about the digital growth in India, the digital India, the make in India, but we hardly talk about that why there is a digital divide between urban India and the rural India and what could be the solution. And in all these kind of things, there is one solution and that solution is the Starlink project because there are many parts in the country which have a difficult terrain and it's very difficult to reach optic fiber there, cables there. In such situation, they could not enjoy the internet. So there are some infrastructural issues, structural issues and that's why we can see that there is a digital divide and in the remote areas of the India, the internet could not reach. So in order to mark this difference, in order to what you can say reduce this gap, Starlink project is one of the solution. But we do have some issues with the Starlink thing. We are also going to talk about it that what are the challenges, what are the concerns and what uh, why there is a delay in fully uh, implementation of the Starlink. So first of all, we are going to know about that what is a Starlink thing. So it is an internet constellation which has been designed by the SpaceX. And this is basically for those areas where uh, what you can say internet could not reach. And this is not just limited to the remote areas that is Starlink will just only work into the remote areas but this is what you can say global connectivity global internet connectivity and it has capacity to reach to the difficult terrain mountains where cables are unable to reach so via satellites it will be uh, operate so this is about the starlink thing so we are going to discuss that how we can effectively use the starlink before moving to any discussion as you already know that we have this uh, isgs foundation course which is available on Drishti learning app in online mode and we have also classes available uh, in Drishti IS Noida. So if you want to know anything about classes, you can call us on 87501, 87501. Also uh, on the online ISGS foundation course, we have upgraded few features just like AI summary, AI quiz, ask me a question. So these all features will be very much helpful for your preparation. So do check all these things. So let's move towards to the discussion part. So the discussion is about which regulation apply to the Starlink. So here if anything uh, is coming from the foreign or this has been particularly designed by the SpaceX. So there should be uh, what you can say rules and regulation they had to follow and then after following the rules and regulation they will be operational in India. So, if you will talk about that, which kind of license they need. So, they need VSET uh, license under the Indian Telegraph Act 1885. The Union Government controls telecom operations and can issue licenses. Then, regulatory oversight, TRI under the TRI Act 1997 advises on uh, licensing fair competition spectrum use. Then we have this spectrum allocation governed by the Telecommunication Act 2023. Starlink must follow rules on satellite spectrum security. Then use of Ku and Ka band frequencies must align with the international standard. So these are the things which Starlink has to follow when uh, they want to operate in India. So this is the that these are the regulation they had to follow. Then if we'll talk about the space operation compliance then they had to also follow the satellite communication policy 2000 then they need to coordinate with the in space and ISRO to avoid any kind of satellite interference then there is a data and cyber security so they need to also see 
द आई टी एक्ट टू थाउजेंड एंड डिजिटल पर्सनल डेटा प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड दे मस्ट इंश्योर इंक्रिप्शन डेटा प्रोटेक्शन कंप्लाई विद नेशनल सिक्योरिटी डायरेक्टिव रियल टाइम ट्रैकिंग एंड यूजर वेरिफिकेशन सो दीज आर द रेगुलेशन एंड रूल्स विच स्टार्लिंग हैड टू फॉलो सो हियर वी कैन सी दैट द नंबर इज ह्यूज एंड दे हैड टू गो थ्रू वेरियस निटीज ग्रिटीज ऑफ इट then why hasn't starlink entered india yet uh, so we had already suggested and we had already discussed that there are so many acts and regulation which starlink has to go through and that's why it is creating hurdle in front of starlink because regulations are much in numbers and it's quite tricky so there are license hurdles so it's very difficult to get a reset license because it requires tough technical and financial scrutiny then there is also spectrum issues because uh, it allows spectrum allocation but pricing in terms of ku and ka bands are still under negotiation with the tri then there is also problem with the security clearance space coordination so these all things are in the process and that's why the starlinks has not arrived in india so because of the a lot of structural procedures the starlink has not arrived in india now we'll talk about the had starlink issues affected its uh, scrutiny clearances so yes there were so many issues which has been highlighted that uh, in the past without any permission and without any uh, structural clearance the starlink has been misused in india and there are chances that it can be misused for some other purposes and which can create cyber fraud so these kind of concerns we have that we do have some instances where starlinks have been misused so here that's why the regulations are much and everybody needs to follow that so that there should not be a case of cyber fraud or any kind of security breach so this is also one of the thing that we need to bring transparency into it and if we'll talk about the cost so yes in initial days the starlink will have a higher cost and it will it can be only affordable for the highest strata because the router uh, the intercom and whatever the things and technological equipments it requires it's very costly so the low income groups could not afford it so if we'll talk about that what it is cost so it is not uh, uh, what you can say uh, it cannot be affordable and it cannot be afforded by any low income group or what you can say middle class group so it can be afforded by the business class group so this has also one of the issues that it can't become much successful because uh, if any project becomes successful that should have a, the mass acceptance so this is also the thing that it has a high cost because of its the initial days equipments so this is also one of the thing now we'll talk about that why does starlink matter so why it matters and why we need to bring starlink because by seeing the today's global outlook and global internet uh, need we cannot completely ignore that starlink is owned and starlink is an initiative by another country so we cannot completely ignore because this is the need of an r and if we want to upgrade our technology then we must collaborate and cooperate with each other and starlink is one such example that we need to take help and we need to utilize it efficiently so by seeing the current global circumstances digital connectivity we could not ignore that why starlink we should ignore so this is also one of the thing that starlink is need of an r but here what we have to take care of is it that if starlink is coming to the india it should be affordable so that every class can afford it also it should not hamper the security breach it should not promote any kind of the cyber crime so these are the structural challenges which are associated with the starlink which we must take care of and that's why the government has also put so many regulations so that we need transparency we need scrutiny and we do not need any kind of cyber crime and fraud uh, in the name of the starlink so this is the concerns associated with it now we are going to talk about the practice question for prelim the indian national space promotion authorization center in space plays which of the following uh, roles in relation to the starlinks operation regulating internet data privacy authorizing the launch of the communication satellites coordinating orbital slot usage and preventing conflict with isro assets allocating mobile spectrum in rural areas 
so this you can easily uh, answer and i hope you like this session if you have any queries later this session kindly ask into the comment section also you need to remember that uh, who has started the uh, starlink what are the features of starlinks how it can be useful in india will it bring digital connectivity it has capacity to bridge the gap between uh, digital divide urban and rural india so these are the probable question you must know and uh, features and who had started it these things are very much important for your prelims examination so you have to prepare it for both the uh, examination prelims and mains also so thank you have a nice day For more informative content like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications